بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضي So we continue our discussion uh, from yesterday and what I would like to share is some aspects of Muslim Christian relations according to the Quran and according to the Hadith. In the book, Unity of God and Unity in God, this book, and if some of you, thank you, and if uh, some of you don't have the book, I have a few copies with me, can give you in the afternoon. Uh, we said that, first of all, unity of God or Tawheed is not one doctrine among many. It's not that because we believe in several doctrines, we treat them equally. For example, we believe in Tawheed, we believe in Nabuwa, Prophethood, we believe in Resurrection, Ma'ad, uh, we believe in divine justice, we believe in imama. So there are few principles. But when it comes to Tawheed, to unity of God, that's the most fundamental doctrine. And as I have mentioned in the book, Lessons on Islamic Beliefs, everything else comes under Tawheed. Our understanding of Nubuwa, our understanding of Imama, our understanding of Islamic ethics, economics, politics, everything should go back to the idea of faith in one God. Even uh, in the book, I explain that how, for example, Allama Taba Tabai Rahmatullah Alayhi in Al Mizan says that the Quranic moral system is new in bringing everything out of deep sense of devotion to God, out of Tawheed. There have been different ways to justify moral goodness, how something becomes morally good, morally right, based on consequences, based on reward and punishment. But he says the Quran offers a unique approach which is based on Tawheed. And if someone is really Muwahid, all the vicious traits of character stop. And all the virtues naturally come. So it's in the book and the reference is there. So basically Tawheed is very, very fundamental. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this world in the way that human beings move towards unity. So in his creation and his revelation, in both of them, he has planned everything in the way that helps people to move towards unity. Unity around him or unity around the absolute truth, which is called, this unity around absolute truth is called guidance. لو شاء ربك لجمعهم على الهدى Had he wanted, he would have brought all of them to guide us. 
but he wants it in his legislative will in al irada to tashri'iyah he wants this but in al irada to takwiniya he has prepared the ground for it but left it to us and to our free choice okay so he says you should move to this direction he doesn't force his plan but this is his plan that we should get together around the truth so when it comes to tashri he has guided us when it comes to takwin he has prepared but not forced one of the things that he has so therefore in the book we have two sections one is about god's plan in creation one is god's plan in legislation or revelation when it comes to takwin so he has created all of us from the same father and mother but then made us into different tribes and nations different colors different ethnicities why let'arafu not let'anaza'u not let'aqatalu let'arafu so that you can identify each other relate to each other you can know each other better unfortunately many times we got the message wrong and we thought if we are different in color if some are white some are black some are red yellow whatever it means either someone is superior or inferior but this was not the reason or if you belong to the east or west it doesn't mean someone is better than the other as the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is no privilege for white over red or red over white or aswad over white uh, arab over ajam ajam over arab the only privilege is <coughs> taqwa inna akramakum inda allah atqakum as the quran says ya ayyuhan nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakar wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila litaarafu inna akramakum inda allah atqak in islamic view you cannot receive credit or you would not be blamed for something which is not in your hand how can we say someone is better than another person just because it has happened that he or she is born in this geographical location or into this you know nation or has this ethnicity or this gender none of these things make someone better because this is not what you have done the only thing that can make someone better is piety of course if there is piety knowledge also can make it even better but knowledge without piety also doesn't make you better so the quran talks about inna akramakum inda allah atqakum the quran talks about ya rafa'illahu alladhina amanu minkum wal ladhina utu al-ilma darajat god raises those who have been faithful and have been given knowledge in ranks so he raises them in ranks and as allah mutabatabai says it means that first people will be stationed or put in rank according to iman then iman mu'minin who has more knowledge would go higher so the idea was that human beings because they have the shared humanity and the same god and the same father and mother they should feel very close to each other they should feel that they are brothers and sisters in the same parents and also in god and just respect each other love each other and make a very beautiful mosaic in which humanity in its different forms and shapes and shades can exhibit virtues but unfortunately many human beings question god many human beings question also equality in humanity some people thought they have more humanity in them than others or even some people thought that some people 
lack humanity. So they treated some human beings like animals. Or they say they have no respect. And their life has no respect. Or they thought that they can enslave others. So this is all against God's plan. But then God didn't stop here. He went further and sent prophets and messengers to unite people. So here we mentioned this beautiful ayah, which is uh, an ayah that needs attention because some people didn't understand it right. People first were one united nation. Not united nations. They were one united nation. Yeah? United nations is for later. People were one nation. Ummatan wahid. But then they started differing and then this, these differences reached the point of divisions. So they were divided. Then God sent the prophets to bring them together. But the sad thing was that after the prophets came to unite them, then soon after they started again differing on the message of the prophet. So they started fighting on understanding what was that unifying message. And this was a very frequent pattern. A prophet comes, brings people together, but after him, his followers are divided. <laughs> then Allah has to send again another prophet to bring unity. But then again, after that prophet, people are divided. So this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped us by sending prophets and messengers to bring unity. On the other hand, the Quran says people like Pharaoh, people who have wishes, intentions, they do the opposite. Unlike the prophets, they try to divide people. Because they know that if people are divided, they are weaker, therefore easier to control. وَجَعَلَ أَهْلَهَا شِيَعَةً Pharaoh divided people. When it comes to Islam, you know that the people in Arab Peninsula, they were very, very divided. There was a tribal culture. If you belong to a strong tribe, you had some safety. If you belonged to a very prestigious tribe, you had respect. So some people had only safety. Some people had safety and respect. Some people had nothing because they didn't belong to any tribe which was strong. People of Medina used to fight each other and they so much suffered that they went to the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca and asked him to move to Medina to bring reconciliation and peace to Medina, to Yathrib which was called at that time. So when Allah refers to that situation before, Allah says, Kuntum ala shafa nar. You were on the edge of hell. And Allah rescued you. So division is like being in hell. You know, now many countries, unfortunately, people experience miserable life and tragedies because of division. And this division makes life like hell. But God brings unity. وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Remember the blessing of Allah when you were enemies and He brought your hearts closer to each other and you became brothers.
So we can be brothers and li live like being in heaven. We can be enemies and make life hell for us and other people. So, anyone who is dividing people, knowingly or unknowingly, is going to a wrong direction and is following Satan, knowingly or unknowingly. And anyone who is working for unity is taking people towards God knowingly or unknowingly. So, in the same way that we have light and darkness, we have also unity and division. When you move towards light, you get more unity. When you move towards darkness, you have more division. Why? Because absolute truth is one. If people have light and understanding and openness, then they become closer to each other and united. When there is darkness, it means there is doubt, where there is confusion, there is suspicion, then people would be divided. So there can be no holy person unless he or she would be an instrument for unity. Unity between husband and wife. Unity between parents and children. Between brothers and sisters. Neighbors. Nations. In all different levels. But if someone is away from God. If someone is selfish or ignorant or unwise. They will just cause misunderstanding first. Second, suspicion. And third, hostility. So misunderstanding, suspicion, and hostility are products of being in darkness, lacking wisdom. When the Quran refers to Harut and Marut, so one of the worst things that people did, that the Quran blames those people, was that they learned from Harut and Marut, who were sent as a test. They said, fitna. We are a subject for your examination. You will be tested in us. So they learned from the magic, but they didn't learn the magic in order to benefit. They learned the magic to do mischief. And one of the things that the Quran very much condemns they learned from them something by which they started then separating husbands and wives. So instead of using this magic for the good of people, they started Causing mischief, but the main mischief, or one of the main mischiefs, was dividing families, breaking down families. So this shows how much division is bad, even if it is between one husband and wife. If someone goes and creates problem between two friends, only two friends, for example, says to this one. That the other person said bad things about you. And he does, you know, namima. This is one of the greatest sins to cause division between two persons. Now imagine if someone causes division between two families, two tribes, two nations, two denominations, if someone makes Sunni and Shia fight each other, if someone makes Catholics and Protestants fight each other, if someone makes Muslims and Christians fight each other, you can imagine, you know, it goes beyond our calculation. <laughs> because if dividing two people is one of the greatest sins, now imagine what would be if someone divides 
two mazahab, two denominations or two religions or two nations. On the other hand, if someone reconciles two people, Amir al-Mu'min salam quoted from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that salahu dhat al-bayn afdalu min ammat al-salat wa siyam if you can bring two people closer to each other, if you can remove misunderstanding that has happened between a husband and wife, between two brothers, two sisters, two neighbors, two colleagues, two alims, it's better than one year of prayer and fasting. Of course, it doesn't mean that you stop praying and fasting. It means that prayer and fasting, which is so important, and it's for a Muslim, a measure to understand what is important because when you compare something with prayer and fasting you understand it's very important so Rasulullah says better than one year of prayer and fasting so unity is very much rooted in our understanding of Tawheed and it has its theoretical implications like Nubuwa and Ma'ad all come from Tawheed, but it has practical implications and that is what we have to do to bring people closer to each other. Therefore, the late Kashif Al-Qita Rahmatullah said something which is very beautiful. He said, Bunya al-Islam ala kalimatayn kalimat al-Tawheed wa Tawheed al-Kalim. Islam is built and founded on two words. Word of Tawheed means word of unity and unity of word. So we believe in one God and you have one word, means you are united. We called this unity of God and unity in God. And this is the main theme of Wings of Unity, that we work on unity of God and unity in God. Muslims, Christians, all Abrahamic uh, religions, they believe in one God. But what is important is that we implement this idea of unity of God in unity among human beings. If we are divided, we are not true believers in one God. It's, it's like, for example, if someone knows that a smoking is harmful and still smokes, so he doesn't truly believe in a smoking being harmful. If someone is uh, aware that knowledge is very good, but doesn't learn, doesn't study, doesn't ask questions, means that he doesn't truly believe that knowledge is good. If someone believes that charity is good, but doesn't do anything that he can do for the poor people, for example, people in need, he doesn't truly believe in charity. So if you truly believe in unity of God, you should work for unity. So, unity of God should be reflected in unity in God. The last point, inshallah we can continue this another time, is about the significance of faith in God. This is something that I mention often. That unfortunately, even believers in God, for the most part, they seem to not really do justice with the significance of God in their life and in their theology. It seems even in our theology, which is supposed to be 
knowledge of God. It's a very nice word. It means everything should go back to knowing God. In our tradition, we say al-ilahiyat. So everything should go back to God. But it seems that God has become one subject among many other subjects. And because people are more attentive to the differences and normally differences between Mazahib and Adyan come after God, so God is somehow put at the margin. For example, so many discussions and books about Sunni Shia differences or Muslims and Christians and Jews differences or Catholics and Protestants and Orthodox differences. For sure, God is not very central in these differences because God is common. Yes, there are differences in some detailed aspects of belief in God. But all Muslims and Muslims and Christians and Jews, they all believe in God of Abraham. This is common. But because this is common, people take it for granted. And they don't give due significance to faith in God. The more, you know, the, the most they do. The most they do is that they say, okay, we all believe in one God. We all believe in the need for guidance. We believe in prophethood. We have resurrection. We have to be accountable before God. We pray, but we pray differently. We fast, but we fast differently. We have to give alms. But there are details which are different. So they make a list of commonalities and differences. And God is only one of many. But I say this is good, but not sufficient. This is to very much uh, simplify things for the sake of a kind of elementary understanding that we don't differ 100%. But it's very wrong to try to understand significance of these commonalities and differences based on counting numeric significance of them is the same they are all one point one common point or one different point but the value is not known by counting like for example if we have a prophet among us okay we say one two three four so we count him like one person in many but a prophet is not one in many. A prophet is special because he receives direct communication from God. So faith in God is not one in many. Faith in God is the most important thing. So if you share with someone faith in God and devotion to God because faith should not be just theoretical. If it is devotion means with your mind and heart you accept God, then it means that you share with someone the most central thing in your life, the most central subject in your knowledge. So if someone shares with you God, how much he shares with you? It's a big question. If someone shares with you God, how much he shares with you? Father, yes, we can say more than 90%. Uh, last week, uh, when I was in Rome, uh, we were discussing after my speech with some people, and then this uh, formula came to my mind. I said, if you have God in common with someone, okay, if you have God in common, for example, sometimes we have our 
place of birth in common. For example, we are both born in the same town. We are both, both born in the same uh, city, uh, country. Or we have graduated from the same university. Yeah, these are things that can be in common. And people give different value to this. For some people to be from the same country is very, very important. Or to be from the same town is very, very important. Now, question is this. If God is common between you and someone, can there be anything greater? I think even if you say that, uh, yes, it would be greater if it is that I have God in common, plus I have my religion in common, plus I have my mazhab in common, plus I have my marja in common. <laughs> I think this is wrong. Because these are not to be put next to God. They should put under God. If God is in common, then everything else goes back now to explore more this commonality. Not to think that you miss something else. So, if there is devotion to God, then it's a channel from which all the blessings come. Some people receive more from this channel, some people may less see, receive less, but all should come from this channel. Because there is no other source of good. No other source of goodness, light, or whatever. It's only God. Therefore, I believe we can never perfectly be united except through God. And I think through God we can be perfectly united. So it's God who can really bring unity. I think I stop here and inshallah we can have nine minutes discussion so that at 10 we start the wings of unity. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.